Okay, so we're going to try and prove that tan x cos x over the square root of 1 minus cos squared x is always equal to 1. Pretty crazy, but we're going to start obviously with this left hand side because that's the messier kind of side that we have here. I think what I also would recommend doing these kinds of questions is writing down things like this that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. Things like cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, sine squared x is 1 minus cos squared x, and tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. If you have these things written down, you can then like refer to these things when you're looking at the question and think, hey, what could I use? Okay, let's go. So we have tan x cos x all over the square root of 1 minus cos squared x. Well, I immediately look at this denominator and I know that 1 minus cos squared is sine squared. So I'm going to use that. So this is the square root of sine squared x. And for the numerator, I'm going to change tan x into sine x over cos x. So I have sine x over cos x and it's being multiplied by cos x. So, you should, if you know how fractions work, which you, you better, I can see on the numerator that the cos x is being multiplied and divided by, meaning that those parts there cancel out. So I can rewrite the numerator now as just sine x. And the square root of sine squared x is just going to be sine x. And if you do sine x divided by sine x, you just get 1, okay? So this is a proof that tan x cos x over the square root of 1 minus cos squared x will always be equal to 1. It's kind of like they've made something really complicated, but when you use all of these tools up here, it kind of all collapses down to 1. Okay, you might like to have a go at doing this one yourself first, if you want to, um, or you might like to watch me do this. Okay, this is a super sneaky one, but they love doing this sneaky stuff that we've got at the top here. Now, you may not recognize this. I'm gonna write down a few letters and see if it helps you. The numerator, I'm gonna write down this and see if anyone in my class remembers. D-O-T-S, dots. Anyone remember what that means? It means it is the difference of two squares. You may not be able to spot that, but cos to the power of 4 theta minus sine to the power of 4 theta, these are the difference of two squares that we've got here. If I wanted to, I could say that it was cos squared theta squared minus sine squared theta all squared. A squaring of a squaring gives a power of 4. So that means I can take the numerator of cos to the power of 4 theta minus sine to the power of 4 theta. And I can actually write it as cos squared theta plus sine squared theta multiplied by cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. If you're finding that a bit difficult, if we think about, I don't know, let's say we have x squared minus y squared, you know that that factorizes to x plus y x minus y. So you take the square root of these things and put them in this pattern. So the square root of this is here and the square root of this is here and you'll notice that we've got those same patterns of an x plus y and an x minus y over here. So now that I've worked that out for that, that numerator, I can actually go ahead and do the, the proof. So I'm going to do cos to the power of 4 minus sine to the power of 4 theta, all divided by cos squared theta. Well, we get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. This is just from the line above. Cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, all divided by cos squared theta. Hopefully you recognize that this thing here, sine squared plus cos squared, either way around, is just equal to 1. So because it's equal to 1, it's almost like it's not there because you're just multiplying by 1, which keeps everything the same. 
So I get cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. Now, when you have a fraction that looks like this, you can split the numerator. You can't split the denominator. And I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. Let's say we had something like, I don't know, 5 minus 1 over uh, 8. So 5 minus 1 over 8 is clearly the same as 5 over 8 minus 1 over 8. Okay, it's the same. You can split the numerator like that. So I'm going to split the numerator here so that I have cos squared theta over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. See if I can squeeze this in. Well, cos squared divided by cos squared is clearly 1. And sine squared over cos squared is going to be tan squared theta. But I'm going to just do that little last bit with the tan squared. I'm going to do it a bit slower. This is the same as sine theta over cos theta all squared, isn't it? If you square this fraction, you would get sine squared theta over cos squared theta. So I can, I shouldn't really do this all in one line, but I'm running out of space. I can then say it's the same as 1 minus tan squared theta, which is the thing we were trying to prove up here. So this is a tough question. We look at the numerator, which is a difference of two squares. We use the Pythagorean identity, so that this is 1 and it disappears. Then we split the numerator like we do with numerical fractions. So we have cos squared theta over cos squared theta and sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Cos squared over cos squared is 1 and sine squared over cos squared is the same as tan squared. Very tough question. So I'm going to have a look at one more on this and then you're going to have to just do a lot of practice. This is a tough, tough, tough one. Now we've got a choice here of which way round we want to do. Like I said, one of my tips is to go from the messier side first. So let's work on the messier side. Why is it going all funny? Whoa. Work on the messier side first. Now, when I look at this, I've got this side or this side. Which do you think is messier? Have a think to yourself. I think the messier side is this one. There's more that I can do to it. I can add those two things together. So I'm going to start off by actually working on this. So I have 1 over cos theta squared minus 1. Do you remember the tip that we had up here? The tip that said, in any addition or subtraction involving at least one fraction, always combine them algebraically into 1. So this is why I've started with this green side, because I've got two things where 1 is an algebraic fraction, and I combine it into one thing like this. So they're going to need a common denominator. Well, I can keep this one as 1 over cos squared theta, but this 1 I'm going to have to change so that it is a cos squared theta over cos squared theta. I've had to sort of multiply 1 over 1 by cos squared theta and cos squared theta. OK, this is why I said at the beginning, you've got to know how fractions work. Otherwise, you can't do this. Now they have a common denominator, I can write cos squared theta. And on the numerator, I've got 1 minus cos squared theta, putting those together. 1 minus cos squared theta. Hopefully you've recognised 1 minus cos squared theta is one of the things we need to memorise. It is sine squared theta. So we have sine squared theta over cos squared theta. If you want, you could write this as sine theta over cos theta squared, which is tan squared theta. Or you could just completely skip that line out and you could go from that to that, whatever you prefer to do. And look, we've ended up with proving that this is tan squared theta that we have down here. Notice again, we've got all of this blank space down here. I'm happy that that black, blank space is here because I'm just starting off with one thing, ending up with another. I like the blank space. You want that to be there, okay? So you can now have a go at doing exercise 10C. I expect you to find this exercise tricky. Let's start with the messier side. Change tan to sine and cos. Combine any fractions together. And my last tip is to look out for things that look like this. It's a shame I scribbled on it. Look out for these kinds of things. They will help you.
If there are any you can't do, I want to know which ones they are and I would like to do some videos on them to help you out. OK, well done. Lots of difficult stuff in Chapter 10. Um, so keep on, keep going.